yoga is one thing. Yeah. And physical practice, um, meditation is a whole nother ballgame. And if you can integrate, again, some aspect, even, even five minutes of meditation a day, right? Absolutely. It's, oh, yeah. It's so helpful. It doesn't have to be like a whole, people think when they have to make a behavior change, that it has to cover this whole thing, and it doesn't. It's oh, yeah. Really oh, yeah. Small easy. steps make big you know, changes, big results. So, um, and it's great, you know, to then take on a new routine. I'm also so grateful from uh, Jane because when I was at the fitness center going for the yoga classes, she would do also breathing exercise sessions, like 20 minutes full on. And that was my only experience with doing meditation. And so of course I've studied and been traveling around the world and doing meditation and centers and really cultivating my practice. But that was really my first taste of it. So, I mean, it really led me on this whole journey and it's still lifelong and it's been really great. So, so with that, yes, let's, let's definitely give, yes, yes, okay. yes, give it away to so Jane. I want to just, I'm going to come back here and I want to make sure that you can all see. Okay. Is this okay? Yes. Perfect. We can do oh, some, I was going to say earlier, we can do some dog yoga. That's really, that's the thing now. <laughs>
much life, how we live our lives, and how we react to the inevitable changes that life brings us. Keep going with that inhale, and then exhale. And then we slowly, very slowly, start to add movement. Because that's all yoga really is. It's linking breath and movement. And no matter where you're at, 
want to make sure that we ground down at one, two, three, four, the four corners of the foot, and that way we can spread the toes. Because a lot of times we grip the mat, we'll like look down, and our toes are curling under. When you see that happening, spread out that weight, distribute that weight. Where do you feel you're, you're more 
Thank you, Jane. So, so wonderful. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I, I wish I started every morning this way. Breath does, just a little breath, right? Oh my gosh, that was so nice. Yes, yes. It's such a wonderful way to um, get just totally uh, rejuvenated. You know, it made me feel like depleted my energy and this is such, an, uh, such a nice, uplifting experience. So, oh. Okay, so what we'll do is start to shift gears so we can make it over to the kitchen. So we'll adjust our uh, technology a little bit and Peter will come and help us out. So, so just give us a uh, couple minutes to shift and we'll hopefully do this quickly. So, oh man, that was so nice. Yeah, and this is like really the perfect segue because the next step would be to feed ourselves, right? Something replenishing and healthy and tasty so so it'll be like the real deal as if we're going to now really get something nice and refreshing to drink afterwards so okay peter's back we're going to shift gears okay While we're just moving over, Jane, I'd love to hear any of your nuggets to share about um, yoga practice in general. If you recommend any certain time of the day at all, or or other nutritional tips. Well, I wanted to tell you too that while you're making the smoothie, I kind of got some information about.
could also go really well with the other fruit. They can go with anything really, it just has that nice sweetness. These were very ripe bananas, so I had frozen them. And of course they're great to bake with, but it's just nice to, you know, stock your freezer so you're like setting yourself up for success when you are craving those sweet foods and having, you know, yourself ready to go for, for something like this, where it's after yoga or workout and you really, you know, you're craving for something. So that'll be kind of the immunity booster. And then, of course, I've got to do something more decadent and like chocolatey. So I've got some cacao powder here. You can get the raw or you can get cocoa powder. And, and then also it goes really well with some type of plant milk. You can use any kind. I happen to have almond milk. Um, it's also really nice with uh, seeds. You know, seeds will give you that richness and thicken it up too. Seeds you can also put on any of the smoothies too just for decoration. It looks really nice. And then... So it's kind of do like probably a chocolatey type of um, nutty uh, finish off with that kind of dessert type of smoothie. And uh, just a great tip, what you can do is for any of these, you can add something more filling like a yogurt, like a vegan yogurt. This is uh, coconut milk. And then that way, if you freeze it, you'll have like an ice cream or a sorbet. You can have a nice little healthy dessert because any of these can really work as a dessert. So it's, it's really fun to play around. And even like the chia seeds, it'll get nice and thick, like a pudding. Also really great to put it in the fridge and chill or in the freezer. And I have sesame seeds here too, which you can, you can blend in or just decorate. Because it's so much about, you know, aesthetics, right? We, we really find so much pleasure in not only the taste and the textures, but obviously how it looks. So, so it's fun to just really get experimental and just see what flavors you like among your family and and uh, whatever you're craving for so so that's the idea here you can really there's just endless combinations for smoothies that you can do so I thought we'll get started with um, the fruit one first and you're welcome to chime in Jane anytime I'm gonna start with the uh, the frozen strawberries here um, I the adding of the, the nut butter That's right. It, yeah, and what the protein does is that actually in terms of when we have a lot of carbohydrates, right, with the fruits and stuff like that, the protein actually helps us release a hormone called peptide YY, which actually helps with our hunger. So it's going to satiate you more by adding those nut butters in, right, or some, like, like you said, with the yogurt, some aspect of So that reminds me of how it's so great to eat this like well-rounded type of yeah. you know, meal in a sense. Because a lot of times, you know, like when you're making a smoothie, you'll put like just maybe like, and nothing's wrong with it, but like you'll put spinach and kale and pineapple and make a lot of carbohydrate. And not that that's wrong, that's good, but we need something to kind of give it some sustenance so that uh, 15 minutes later, you're, you're going to be like, need to make some noise here and blend this, so I apologize. <laughs> okay, so give me a moment. So if you have like a high speed blender, you know, that really helps to get everything blended down nicely. And you can see just, you know, a matter of few moments um, you've got a nice smoothie and and obviously you know portion control is important too because for sure I can I can live off of these and, <laughs> and overdo it because it just goes down so smoothly so what I can do is I'll have smaller glasses for myself so I can remind myself to have like a limit I'm doing cute little cups for the demo but obviously I know Jane you must talk about this a lot with with your students and clients that, you know, having um, a small portion is great, is key. I wish we were there with you so that we could drink that. I know, you? I know, it, it 
has all these different flavors that really come together and then the fact that the strawberries were frozen, it's really, it's nice and cool. In the past, I used to add also ice to the smoothie, which is great, but yeah. it'll get a little watery. And so it's really nice to have some frozen elements too. So, um, and I'll be sharing the recipes too. So, and you've got like kind of a general combination idea. So yeah, yeah I mean, perfect to just, uh, oh, just wash down after, you know, a workout. So, okay. So we'll shift gears over to our next, um, and what about too before yoga? Do you recommend Jane like not to eat um, so many hours before like a workout or something, especially yoga yeah. class? Um, you want to make sure that you have a little bit of something in your stomach because you know that when you're like let's say when we're around dogs and we come up, if you don't if you're if you don't have anything in there, right? You can see stars. I mean, you can get a little lightheaded. So like maybe about an hour before. Um, than just having one or the other, it's actually the combination of the right. two. actually to do a catered birthday cake. So I used the, the monk fruit um, for the cake and also coconut sugar um, for the frosting. So vice versa, you can do any combination. Okay, and then just to give it a little bit of liquid so it'll blend down, I have some I have some almond milk. Again, you can use any milk. I mean, you could also put water to keep it more just light since we have a lot of uh, nice sweet flavors here too. So just to give it Something that we can blend it Almond down. Almond milk is nice because it gives you the calcium. Excellent. Okay, so bear with me. I apologize for the sound. I must confess, it is it is really yummy. <laughs> I, 
I was a little, I was a little worried with like too much uh, ginger and, and turmeric, but it's really yummy. I think because the these bananas were super ripe, and so and the dates, so that's like that sweetness right there to balance the earthy tones. Yeah, and tell me about the monk fruit. Is that sweeter than a date? Like the taste it, of it? It is quite sweet. Yes. Yeah. It's um. It's kind of like called the new stevia these days because stevia I'll use in my um like coffee or tea sometimes, but unfortunately it seems to have to me a little bit of an aftertaste. It's it's got yeah. a very distinct flavor. Yeah. The monk fruit's really smooth, and it's I use it as a sugar replacer in in baked goods. So. And yeah. it's a powder. They have it in a powder you, form. It's typically like little grains, like granules. And I bought the powdered version because I was doing the cake, and I wanted to try it out in an icing. So you can buy it. It's typically just the little gra you know granules, but uh, and then you can powder it at home much cheaper in a blender, which I, I normally do. Is I just make my own powdered sugar, it's or or you can use coconut sugar in the blender because it's like a fraction of the price. I know it's like such a great little secret I learned over the years in culinary is just make it at home. You don't even need that much powdered sugar, so. Right. In general, for your baking, I'd like to. I'd like to try the monk food. I've seen it, but I haven't. Yeah, yeah like Whole Foods. It's getting much more popular, so we'll start seeing it more and more. Maybe even eventually at cafes too, like how stevia you can find at cafes now. So, uh, but yeah, yeah it's, it's wonderful. Doesn't have any aftertaste. I don't know. It, it does. It does. It does. I mean, it, it's sweet. <laughs>
is like a nice little dessert. So I put it in a, a shorter glass. So we've got the the illusion of a, a lovely little um, mousse. Sure. Oh yeah. Can I try the first one? Yet? And and Peter's ready to taste test. Oh. So here, this one is the strawberry. Oh, hey yeah. guys. <laughs> and this one is the immunity booster. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then you can, yeah, keep adding more chia to really thicken this up too, and then pop like it in. Pudding. Oh yes, and then pop it into the the fridge or the freezer, get it, get it nice and thick. You know what's interesting about? Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but um, with cacao and cocoa, yes, yes, right, they all start the same, but the difference comes into the processing, right? Right. about it 
even to say the word was so hard for me, but just saying that first word when I called my doctor, when I said, like, I think I'm depressed, it was like, oh, already such a, a weight lifted off of me to be authentic and be open and get help. So they recommended antidepressant pills, and I, I tried that for a year and a half, and at the same time, what I really wanted to do was, you know, not take any pills and just really learn how to heal my body from the inside out. You know, deal with, like, what are these emotions, you know, that are obviously causing me so much turmoil. You know, I have a loving family around, a great job, like, how could this be? So at the same time, my other, like, dark secret was I was drinking a lot of alcohol. <laughs> you know, I had started drinking when I was 15 years old. And bless my parents, you know, they didn't know. And that was just my form of escapism. It could have been any form of, of vice, you know, nothing against it. That was just what I did too much of. And that was my, my way of coping. So <laughs> my own life self-medicating. And I would also eat pretty healthy for the most part, but I wasn't really thinking of food as like, you know, food as medicine really either too. So long story short, what I did was I, um, taking the pills did help me to then stop drinking the alcohol because you're not supposed to mix the two and I wanted to not mess up my body. So it actually helped me to taper off the alcohol and then I was really drawn to like reading books and learning about meditation. So I, I mean, I was a self-help junkie. I was willing to do anything and everything. So I just started reading and researching and that's how I started reading about, you know, vegetarian, vegan diet. So I was actually vegetarian first and it was a great way for me to transition and I was already starting to feel much better. And when I switched to totally vegan, I just, I had so much more energy. I felt better, felt more clear and pure in my whole system. It just, it, it was just like, you know, scientific, yeah. like, like magic for me. So, and everyone's different. It just worked really well for me. And actually after that, I cultivated so much more compassion for animals. It really, for me, was about, just really about my own health and well-being. So, but it worked in alignment very well with a more peaceful lifestyle. So, so then, you know, we flash back to 2013. That's when I had left my job and I decided to go on this tour, kind of very much like Eat, Pray, Love. You know, I was very inspired by Elizabeth Gilbert, by her book and movie, and I wanted to just go and travel for a year. And of course, you know, my, my family was concerned, my parents, and, and I can yeah. understand. They, they were very worried. And um, it was, it all worked out wonderfully. I mean, it definitely took something for me to be so, um, so bold like that. But I knew if I wanted radical results, I had to make radical change because I had really hit my rock bottom. And um, really to the point of, of considering suicide, like I knew I have to make a change. So yeah, it was really dark. And that's why I, I you know, we, all, we have to be our own like doctor and advocate. So I'm really grateful that I had, you know, the, <laughs> I had it in me to take charge of my own life. So I was learning about meditation and mindfulness. I would do just little practices and, and just even like, you know, what Jane did, just those few minutes, you know, so much peace and joy and compassion just in those few moments. And I thought, imagine if I can have this, you know, <laughs> for a long time. So I started researching and I, I found the Vipassana retreats and I had a lot of Indian friends, you know, working in tech, and so they told me, like, yeah. when, you, when you go off on your travels, because I was really drawn to India, I'd already been before for a friend's wedding, so I loved the culture and everything, and, and I was drawn to yoga and Ayurvedic cooking and eating, and so when I went to India, my friends said, you know, just don't ever pay for a course, you know, there's so many scams out there, so don't pay money for a course, so I just looked up free Vipassana, because I knew that was a technique I really wanted to learn, where it just works with the mind, mind and body connection of just, you know, your natural breath and the body sensations. And I thought, wow, it must be so healing. And so what I did was I just looked up, you know, these courses and I found they're all over the world. They've been around, you know, for decades, look very reputable. And it's all run on donations and volunteers. I mean, it's such a pure system. It's not commercialized. And not that there's anything wrong to run it as a business, but it's designed so that you're always giving from the kindness of your heart to help others. So you can only donate your time or money if you've done the course yourself. So it was really beautiful. So I did my first retreat in India. I could have done it anywhere. We have centers all around California, but I really wanted to start there. And, and I knew like this was it for me. This is the practice I've been searching for for so long. And yes, it's hard. I mean, meditation, it's not, not like you're just going on vacation. I'm sure there are those types of meditation, but 
But to really get real with yourself and be with yourself, be with your thoughts, this crazy mind that we all have, it takes something. The mind is always wanting to be busy, busy, busy. The hardest part about meditation is just, you know, being with yourself and 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 allowing things to come and go and, and you, you develop so much like strength and wisdom and, and just calm. And that's how we can then apply it in life. Like life will always have all of these crazy things happening around, but then we end up reacting, you know, versus just responding or acting. And it's just natural, we just react. And so that's why it, it was so, it was just paramount for me where I can learn to just really come from a place of peace and harmony and, and, and exude that. Because if we want peace in the world, first we have to be peaceful. <laughs> so it really starts with us. We, we do want our society to shift in our world, especially with what's happening now. And I get it, it really starts right here. That's, you know, we can't shift as a, as a society, as a community until it's right here and then it grows. So. So I realized, you know, the work is right, you know, right here. And I was fortunate because I stayed in these centers. I got to live there long term, like a work exchange program. I had applied for the Peace Corps and then I, I found out in the centers you can stay. So I thought this is like the, the peace service I've been searching for. So I stayed there and I, I was able to live throughout Europe and then also Southern California, just because I love Southern California because I grew up in the Bay Area. So um, yeah, it worked out really well for me. Now I'm back and able to focus on my culinary career and develop that since in the centers I was working uh, typically as a chef, a manager, and I, I grew in so many ways, so many new skills. You know, I had never managed people before, it was just terrifying. So, I mean, I had a college, college degree, but like this was the best university training I've, I've ever experienced because you're coming together with people from all over the world, all different ages, and cultural barriers and languages and and there's always going to be misunderstandings that come up we're all there to you know help centers run and help more participants get the meditation practice so when we're coming together we're practicing and we don't even realize it cultivating more of that harmony among each other and working out our problems and because you know friction will arise among any group of people of families and it's usually misunderstanding anyway but <laughs> we all have the ego so yeah, it was just such a uh, once in a lifetime experience for me. I'm really grateful and now that I'm back and, and Peter's done the meditation course now too. So, and, and yes, it's, it is challenging to keep up a daily practice. So just like anything else in life, you know, having that community support is really helpful. So I have Vipassana meditators. We do a, a Zoom session together around the world. So they have it set you know, morning, evening, every day, up to a thousand people are on the session and it's, yeah, it's really remarkable. It still takes something for me to like, you know, get my butt to stop my life and sit down because <laughs> then I know I come back to my work or my family or whatever so much more yeah. like refreshed, right? That's why companies are catching on and they, a lot of these big tech companies, you know, they have meditation rooms all in their buildings and everywhere because they know employees will be more healthy and productive on the job, right. much more happy and productive on the job. So, but it definitely still takes something. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's just, oh, sure. it's still a lifelong journey. Like with, with yoga, you know, exercise, like keeping up, you know, a practice. So that's why it's great, you know, to help each other and stay active and involved and, and still get to spread, you know, this healthy way of living. So uh, I'm great, really grateful for it all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. I'm really glad glad to share this, and so and that's why I do a lot of other talks strictly focused on the meditation to share with people about you know this practice and you know how it's available all over the world. Right now the centers are closed, like many places, and so hopefully they're coming up with ways to keep the practice spreading. Maybe you know building some outdoor areas or doing some yeah. virtual sessions. So we'll see what else is to come, like like so many other places organizations, you know, shifting their yeah. practice. Yeah. So right. we'll, we'll see what's yeah. next. Yeah. Yeah. So anything else, uh, Jane, actually we can also open up if anyone has questions, um, we can do some of that and then I'll follow up with um, anyone else too, if they have questions and be happy to 
share recipes and and other events moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyone's welcome to ask questions. Peter, you here? <laughs> Is there any more? He, he's asking, are there any more smoothies? <laughs> You'll have to come make it yourself. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he loves to cook. I feel so blessed. Oh, my goodness. Is, is yeah. Peter vegan, too? You know, what's amazing is he, he eats mostly vegan, and he wasn't before we met. It's just it, it's a wild story. because And he has, he has a whole spiel on how he so much, he's still an adventure guy, but, you know, he's doing so much of, like, like fishing and hunting, and he's, he just loves to be outdoors. And um, what's also great is he loves doing the, the wild uh, mushroom foraging. So he goes, oh, cool. he goes and does that and has taught me. So we'll, so that's our form of oh, hun hunting. So we're hunting oh. for mushrooms. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. And then he loves, he loves the food, especially with a lot of the, the Asian cuisine, like the Chinese food, you know, so much of the tofu and mixed veggies. I mean, there's so many options, fermented soybeans. Yeah, there's a lot. He loves to cook it, and I love to eat it. So <laughs> there's been many vegan options, which so many people don't associate in the world. There's so much food that is, like, naturally, traditionally vegan, coming from right. you know, all these different cultural backgrounds, which we don't think of, but there are many. So so it's actually been a really smooth transition because he's very much a foodie, and so then I can share with him all these other ideas of, like, wow, how to make – me that's made with like mushroom and walnut all the seasonings and it tastes like so good and make meatball and so there's a lot of fun things that we do together so so it's worked out really well i'm, I'm very grateful <laughs> I, I, I know it <laughs> yeah i feel very fortunate because i i imagine be, it would be quite challenging not to have your partner get to share your meals together and anyway I, so that, that's yeah. kind of like what i inspiring yeah. others to share with them a meal especially we were doing more dinner parties until shelter in place but or bringing food to parties and people eat yeah. this this cheese and they're amazed what is this cheese like preferring that over you know the other non-vegan offerings and when I tell them like you can blend it up in a minute you know with some cashew and seasoning it's like what yeah so and I think it's important sometimes not to tell them maybe beforehand it's really fun. We've done that too. It's a really fun trick to Isn't do. Isn't it? Because it there's is. that preconceived, there's that preconceived notion that, oh, right? Oh yeah, yeah. It's a really fun thing to do. Absolutely, because it's so much about right here, like everything in life. <laughs> it's right it in is. our mind. Yeah. So it's we can true. mimic flavors and are, textures. Are, are there any other vegans online, or vegetarians, or carnivores, mm -hmm. or omnivores? I think. I think. Those who are interested in this type of, you know, food offering, which is which is wonderful because I think it's fun to incorporate just, you know, more plant-based into the diet. It's a great, you know, interest or transition. It doesn't have to be like all or nothing and for you know, for most people. Right. So it's I think it's great to just get more yeah, more slowly it, into it. it. it, it, it. Yeah, and you can pick up new habits and routines, and, and you know, Jane, about how it goes with our behavioral patterns and changes. It's so much about Perfect. our behavior. Change, behavior change is the, one of the hardest things to do. <laughs> hardest things to do. Yeah, it's that same right? thing. <laughs> yeah. And you have to be in that, that stage of change for it, too. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, so you, yeah, you get into that zone. <laughs> Yeah. It is. Yeah. There's it is. science behind it. There really mm -hmm. is. It is interesting. Yeah. So, so with that, I'd like like to let you all get get yourselves replenished, and I'm really really glad we got to do this. The yoga and the breath felt amazing. 
And I hope you can enjoy some, some yummy recipes at home to whip up a smoothie and get your family involved and it can be really fun. So yeah, this was great. Great to be with you all. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you for yeah. making this happen. And thank you, Peter, for all your technical wisdom. You with got it. Oh yeah. He said, you got it. <laughs> and thanks to everybody yeah. who wants online. Oh yes. So. Yeah. So we'll be in touch. Yep. Yep. And, and Jane, share your, uh, your Facebook page. My Facebook page is The Seasoned Vegan. And your and YouTube? My, my yoga page uh, is, uh, or my yoga website is janemagintoshyoga.com. And so, your yoga classes that you're showing online are on your Facebook page and, and your YouTube? And counseling because I am a certified nutrition specialist. Excellent. So I do get the science behind me. It's just not, Excellent. you know. Absolutely, it's very key. Oh yeah, it's oh yeah, it's yeah. From the science, right? From the science part, part of it. So and yeah. your YouTube channel, the name. Your YouTube channel. Oh, oh yeah, the YouTube channel. It, you know what? Please, <laughs> it's. I don't know the name of it. It's just. Well, I'll post it. I'll share it, and that's focused on the yoga, right? You do yoga sessions on YouTube. very often is yes the cruelty free products because I'll yes. I'll research and, and then I'm talk, talk about yeah. that that's a whole thing that yeah. we could have because that's yeah. so confusing yes let's because do it let's definitely do it with products can't say cruelty free yes but if it's sold over in China yeah 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 it, it, it's not so yeah. there's a lot of misnomers with yeah. that so. it'd be nice to know some key products that I know I can trust and just go to and where to get them from, store, online. So yeah, let's definitely do a talk on the vegan products. Okay. I see that question a lot in a lot of the blogs too online. So yeah. that'll be great. So good. And I'll, I'll post how to uh, follow you as well. And those know me on Vegan Victoria. And so it's really great to keep branching out as I'll be offering more of the dance and yoga and meditation and really encompassing a whole lifestyle. So, so that's what I'm up to. So so thank you all. It was so much fun, and I look forward to our next uh, sessions together. So everyone have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and uh, we'll be together next time. Thank you. All right, so take care. Take care. Bye, Lisa. I'm so glad Bye. you could join. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.